Fermat's theorem confirms our intuition that if we have a function that attains maximum and minimum values at points where the tangent line is well defined, then the slopes of those tangent lines at those points, the derivative of the function at those points, must be zero. Now here's the precise statement. Fermat's theorem states that if we have a function f that has a maximum or a minimum at a point c and the derivative of the function at that point f prime of c exists, then that derivative f prime of c must be zero. Now this is not the only way a function can have a maximum or a minimum at a point c. Just consider the absolute value of x, which clearly has a minimum value of zero at x equals zero. But we have seen before that this function uh, has no derivative at zero. The derivative at zero does not exist. Nor can we uh, reverse Fermat's theorem to declare that if the derivative at c is zero, then the function f must have a maximum or a minimum at c. A good example showing that this is not the case would be f of x equals x cubed at x equals zero. The derivative of the function at that point is zero. The slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at that point is zero. Nevertheless, the function has neither a minimum nor a maximum value at that point. Now, because of these two cases, it's good to introduce the notion of a critical point. We say that c is a critical point of the function f if either the derivative at that point f prime of c is zero or the derivative at that point does not exist. With the, no with the help of this uh, critical point, we can restate, formulate Fermat's theorem once more as follows. If f has an extreme value at c, then c must be a critical point. Finally, to find the, lo uh, the global maximum or global minimum of a continuous function over a closed interval, you can use the closed interval method, which, which consists of three steps. Step one is to locate all critical points of the function in that closed interval. Step two is to evaluate the endpoint values, that is f of a and f of b. And step three, the last step, is to select the largest and smallest values out of the values we have found, that those are the endpoint values and the values the function attains at the critical points. The largest of these values will be the global maximum of the function over the closed interval, and the smallest of these values will be the global minimum of the function over the closed interval. Now, this is enough for now. Let's see if you got the idea. Select all critical points of the function f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Pause the video and select your answers now. I hope you paused it and have selected for the only critical point c equals negative 3. So this is a polynomial function. It's differentiable everywhere. The derivative ex exists for all x, but uh, there are places where the derivative becomes 0. So let's compute where, where, those, where that place is. Um, so differentiating the function using the differentiation rule, we get 2x plus 6, and this becomes 0 if and only if uh, x is equal to negative uh, 3. Let's look at the next question. Select all critical points of the function f of x equals the absolute value of 2x minus 8. Pause the video and select your answers now. I hope you paused it and I've selected for the only critical point c equals 4. And you can find this by looking at this absolute value function and realizing that it, the derivative where it exists is never 0. So the only places where the critical points could be is where the derivative does not exist. And for this absolute value function, we know that that happens when the argument 2x minus 8 vanishes becomes zero. So we have to solve this equation for x. Just rearranging it, we will find that the only critical point is at four. Let's look at the next question. Find the global maximum capital M and the global minimum little m of the function f of x equals four x plus four divided by x plus one plus two over the closed interval between negative 0.5 and positive three. Pause the video and input your answers in the boxes. Hope you paused it and I found that the global maximum was 15 and the global minimum was 6. You can find these extrema, extreme values, by using the closed interval method, which consists of three steps. Step one was to find all critical 
points for this function in the closed interval. Now the function is differentiable everywhere for x is in that closed interval. So the only way we can find critical points is by finding where the derivative becomes zero. Now the derivative of this function we can find using the differentiation rules and we obtain four minus four over x plus one squared for the derivative. And we have to solve uh, where the derivative vanishes this equation for x. Now that only happens if x plus one squared is one. And that only happens if x is equal to zero. So zero belongs to that closed interval and that is the only critical point that we care about. So f evaluated at that point, uh, x equals zero will give us zero plus four over one plus two, that gives us six for a value. The next step in the closed interval uh, method is to find the endpoint values. These are the values the function takes on at the end point of the interval. So those are f of negative 0.5 and f of 3. At negative 0.5 we get 4 times negative 0.5 being negative 2. That cancels the positive 2 at the end and we are left with 4 divided by negative 0.5 plus 1. That is positive 0.5 in the denominator. 4 divided by that gives us 8. For f of 3 we get 4 times 3 that's 12 plus 4 divided by 3 plus 1, that is 4, 4 over 4 is 1, so 12 plus 1 plus 2, that is 15. The last step of the closed interval method is to find the global maximum. We need to choose the largest of these values we have found so far. So the largest will, value will give us the absolute or global maximum of our function over this closed interval and that value out of 6, 8 and 15 is 15. That's the global maximum. Whereas for the global minimum we need to choose the smallest of the values we have found and so the global minimum of the function f over this closed interval will be out of 15, 8 and 6 will be 6. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.